Hello, my name is Pastor Joel Silverman. We thank you for watching the Regeneration broadcast. It is our hope that you would be enriched in the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Enjoy this message and may God richly bless you. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Father, we want to thank you that we can come together to worship the living God, that you, Lord God, have made a way for all of us to be here in safety and in peace this day, that we can hear the word of the Lord. We pray for those around the world that don't have that privilege, Lord God, who fear for their life to come in and to, and to pray in the name of Jesus. Would you bless them even abundantly this day in Jesus' name? Amen. We've been preaching on our roots of Judaism, uh, that we as Gentiles and Gentile church are rooted in Jewish religion, that God would give a blessing to the Jew and the Gentile together. That is the heart of the Lord. And so I'm not going to go over <clears throat> all of the last two weeks, needless to say, but I would encourage you to get the two CDs because it kind of lays out a history of what's taken place in the world and how we wound up in the places that we're in today where it seems that Jew and Gentile are so separated even in the body of Christ. That's not God's heart. So we're going to just go open up with the 24 if we can, Margaret. Um, I, want, I went over this last week, but I just want to kind of start with it again. Replacement theology is a theology that goes on <clears throat> in many Gentile churches today that is not scriptural. If you're reading your Bibles, I encourage you last week to read Romans 9, 10, and 11. Uh, Romans 11 lays out perfectly the heart of God for the Jew and the Gentile person. And we are never to be really separate. That In God, he sees us one, and we'll talk about that as the one new man. But through the years, and we went through this in the last two weeks, uh, there's been much teaching that is really false teaching. It's erroneous um, that God replaced Israel with the church. That was never, ever, ever the heart of God. It is nothing in scripture that bears truth to that. So we have to always be able to discern and to separate what man has brought in and what God's truth says, the word of God. And you always take the word of God over anybody else's opinions. Amen? So replacement theology has said this, basically that Israel has been replaced by the Christian church in the purposes of God. Or more precisely, the church is the historic continuation of Israel to the exclusion of the former, not true. That the promises, covenants, and blessings given by God to Israel in the Bible have been taken away from the Jews and given to the church, which has superseded them. Not true. However, the Jews are subject to the curses. Found. Isn't that interesting? So they're not allowed to have the blessings in this kind of a theology, but they're allowed to have the curses. What, what's wrong with that? However, the Jews are subject to the curses found in the Bible as a result of their rejection of Christ. The Jews Jewish people are now no longer chosen people. In fact, they are no different from any other people group. That will never happen, ever, ever, ever. Everybody say, never, ever, ever, ever. And how do we know that? Let's look at 25. Jeremiah 31, 35 tells us, this is what the Lord says. Who cares what people say? This is what the Lord says. He who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea so that it's waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. Only if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, will Israel ever cease being a nation before me. This is what the Lord says. Only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth below be searched out, will I reject all the descendants of Israel because of all they have done, declares the Lord. So we have to understand he is steadfast in his covenant to Israel and the Jewish people. That will never, ever change. There has always been a remnant of Jewish people who have believed in Messiah. There always will be. And I believe in the day that we're living in, we're going to see more and more Jewish people come in to receive Yeshua as Messiah. 
And so we need to understand that God is basically saying he has never rejected his people. But we're going to talk about today how he basically, I'm going to use the term, set aside the Jewish people so that the times of the Gentiles could come in. We have to understand that there's times and seasons of God for the purposes of the Lord on the face of the earth. God is always a purposeful God. There's not just things that are being done willy-nilly. And so Paul, we talked about this last week, who is a Jewish man, obviously a brilliant man, a, a very well-educated man in his day, um, who you would think God would use to go speak to the Jewish people. God, in his sense of humor, takes this man and has him go speak to the Gentile nations. Now, we sit back 2,000 years later and we say, oh, okay, that was unheard of in that time. Unheard of. Because the Gentile nations were pagan nations. They worshipped zillions of gods. They had no revelation of the true and living God that had been given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, passed down through all the patriarchs, uh, Moses being the writer of the first five books of the Old Testament. And so we need to understand that uh, the, the Gentiles of the, the years gone by were just pagan in their worship. They worshiped many, many different gods. And so here is this Jewish man, this uh, scholar, and he is sent to these nations, these pagan people, pagan nations, to say, hey, there is one God, and I'm going to bring forth the word of truth to you, but Paul always preached to the Jew first. Amen. Always preached to the Jew first. So let's look at number 29. So Paul is speaking, this is Romans 11, probably around verse 13. He says, I'm talking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. He knew who he was. I take pride in my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection brought reconciliation to the world... What will their acceptance be but life from the dead? Amen. If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. And we're going to talk about this today. So if that first root, that dough, as they're, as they're using the illustration, is holy, the whole batch is holy, he's saying. If the root is holy... The root of Judaism, the root of the foundation that God laid upon the patriarchs in the very early times of the world. If the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, Gentiles, though a wild olive shoot have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not consider yourselves to be superior to those other branches. And let me say, replacement theology says the Gentile church is superior to our Jewish roots. That is a falsehood out of the pit of hell. So we need to understand God is very, very serious about having one new man. Now, why is this important to us today? Well, first of all, look at the times we're living in. Look at the times we're living in. Always look at Israel. It's God's timetable. When you see things happening in Israel, God is up to something. Because the uh, first heart of God way back was that Israel, this nation of believing people in the one holy and true God, would be the one nation on the earth that would stir the other nations, the Gentile nations or the pagan nations, to jealousy that they would want to worship the one true God. That was the heart of the Lord for the Jewish nation. Now we know, of course, they had their stumbles. They went up, they went down, they went around. But God has never forsaken them. It's very important to understand that. And he never will forsake them. He always has that believing remnant. And so we have to understand as Gentiles, these many years later, we are grafted in to that root. That the root is holy because it's ordained 
ordained by God. It is set apart, a people set apart to display his holiness, to display who he was. Remember that the Jewish people were given all of the revelation of God, who he is as the almighty God. They were given the, the revelation of the promises of God, uh, the scriptures of God, the promise of the Messiah, the Son of God who was going to come. They were given the glory, the Shekinah glory. Read your Old Testament. I don't understand when people don't read their Old Testament. It's full of the promises of God and the glory of God and the kindness of God. So we need to understand even where people say, oh, God got so angry at them because God was trying to draw them back to himself. You know, our nature, our bent, Jew or Gentile, is always to go in the direction of sin. It's always to go in the direction of sin. And it's only the grace of God that keeps turning us back in the other direction to go in his direction. So God has brought forth these people to be a display of his glory to every other nation on the earth. Now, one day that is going to happen. And we will see it. All right, let's look at number 30. So uh, Paul continues, he says, if you do, and he's saying, if you feel you're superior to them, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then branches were broken off so that I, Gentiles, could be gr grafted in. He says, granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Remember, they were new in faith. This is the Roman church. These are pagan people who have come into revelation of Christ as Savior and Lord. So he's saying, you're standing by faith now. Don't be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, the Jewish people, he will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and the sternness of God. The sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Provided that. That's a qualifying statement. We are always as the Gentile church to have a love, the love of God for the Jewish people. And if you want your life to be blessed, start praying for Israel and start blessing Jewish people and start asking the Lord, who can I really speak to or pray for? How can I be of a blessing to them? You're going to see blessings come back upon you. God's word is truth. So we need to understand that the word of God is very true, that it's the support is the root of Israel, the Jewish believers, and the, the nation of Israel, all of the truths that have come forth from them, that we stand on as a believing church today. And Margaret, do we have that grafted in picture? So Margaret was kind enough to hunt us up. Let's just see what we got here. Now, if you see that stem or the major root would be the Jewish people. Judaism. We are that planting that gets grafted in. And it's so amazing that with grafting, what happens is they have to make a slit or an opening in the original root. And then they have to take the plant and align these lines that are in the plant literally with the lines that are in the root. And then they take it and they tape it together. And the grafted plant, the sapling plant, begins to take nutrients from the root. And so the root, which would be the Jewish people, give us the truths of the word of God. And we are nurtured as Gentile believers by the origin of the Jewish roots that God laid out for Israel that nation thousands of years ago. Now think about that. So when you look at that, that we are the people that are grafted in, this is why he's, Paul is saying, don't be arrogant here. You better realize who you are. That if God broke off other branches who were disobedient to him, hey, he can do the same thing to you. So we never take that for granted. So we need to understand that grafting in is very, very real, and we are to honor the Jewish people, be a blessing to Jewish people all the days of our life without any question. So let's look at our next one, 31. Paul continues, he says, otherwise you'll be cut off. 
And if they do not persist in unbelief, the Jewish people, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you are cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature, meaning the Gentiles, and contrary to nature, were grafted into a cultivated tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, meaning the Jewish people, be grafted into their own olive tree? I do not want you to be ignorant. Let me say this to the Gentile church. We are not to be ignorant of this teaching. This is the heart of God. We are never to be ignorant of our Jewish roots. I do not want you to be ignorant of this ministry, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Don't think who you are. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until, everybody say, until the full number of the Gentiles has come in and in this way all Israel will be saved. So this is the timings that we are in, the time zone of God, that we are in the ending of times of the Gentiles coming into the, the believing body of Messiah, and we are going to see the Jewish people now start to truly come in, I believe, in great, great numbers into Messiah, and it's going to be a miraculous, wonderful thing when Jew and Gentile lines up together in a congregation and worship the Lord. Um, we, I spoke last week about uh, Rabbi uh, David and Helene Rosenberg. Let me tell you something. When you hear that precious man teach and he ties the Old Testament in with the New Testament, you want to lay down on the ground and scream because of the richness and the fullness of the truth of God as a Jewish believer that he has and what he brings into the body of Christ. And we will have him back again soon, I, can, I hope. They're very busy. So Israel was temporarily set aside because of their unbelief, but God used it so that the Gentile nations would come in through the teachings of Paul and his followers, and they were greatly, greatly impacted. They started to come in in droves and droves. And we talked about last week that at some point there was a switch over, um, probably around in the year 327, Constantine, who was a Roman emperor, becomes a believer, and now all of a sudden, the persecution, which was against the, uh, the Christian church, now switches, and there starts to come great persecution against the Jewish people. And that, again, was never the heart of the Lord. But out of that, we talked about men who were very known in the faith, Martin Luther, Augustine, Chrysostom, and many, many others who brought false teachings in to Christianity about Jewish people because they had their own issues with the Jewish people. Uh, it's said by history lessons that Martin Luther was reached out to the Jewish people and because he was rejected by them he became angry. He had a big issue and he turned against them and he brought some pretty ugly teachings against them which went into seminaries and were taught for hundreds of years the, the lies of God being against the Jew. Horrible, horrible, horrible which produced replacement theology. So we are responsible responsible for what we hear. Amen? And we need to understand God's heart. So, um, do we do verse thir uh, number 33, otherwise you'll be cut off? I think I did that. If they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in again. That's the Jewish nation will come back in droves to the Lord. Amen. For, uh, number 32, as it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. Jesus is returning to the Mount of Olives in where? Jerusalem, Israel. We talked about this. He's not coming back to Washington or New York. He's coming back to Israel. And so the deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. And look at these words. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake. He's speaking to the Gentiles. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved by God on account of the patriarchs. 
the Lord made a covenant with the patriarchs that has never been broken and it never will be broken. So the Jewish people are loved by God on the account of the patriarchs for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Now let me tell you, we use that a lot of times for the gifts of God within our lives individually, which is fine, but it's really for the Jewish people. That's what the context is here. God's gifts to the Jewish people and his call are irrevocable. Just as you Gentiles who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of the Jewish disobedience, so they too now have become disobedient in order that you too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. Now, I want to just read something for a minute before we go on. I thought this was very interesting when I'm reading that, how God has blessed the Jewish people. Jewish people on the planet Earth are less than 2% of the entire population. It's like 1 point something percent, less than 2%. But the contributions that they have made to society outweigh every other nation on the planet by far. Every other nation. So I, I had printed this out. You just have to hear it. I saw, thought it was just so interesting. Um, and they're saying today Israel, a nation only 70 years old, it just had its birthday, has emerged as the, at the forefront of stem cell research, which will in the near future give humanity unprecedented medical treatment for degenerative diseases. But they were talking about others of the Jewish background and the intelligence that God has given to these people. Now listen to this. This is contributions to society. Albert Einstein, I hope we all know his name, great <laughs> physicist. Jonas Salk created the first polio vaccine. Albert Sabin developed the oral vaccine for polio. Galileo discovered the speed of light. Selman Waxman discovered streptomycin and coined the word antibiotic. Gabriel Lippmann discovered color photography. Baruch Bloomberg discovered origin and spread of infectious diseases. G. Edelman discovered chemical structure of antibodies. Brian Epstein identified the first cancer virus. Maria Meyer, structure of atomic nuclei. Julius Meyer discovered law of thermodynamics. Can you imagine this? Sigmund Freud, father of psychotherapy. Hello, Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas. Guess who was Jewish? Oh, Christopher Columbus. Benjamin Disraeli, prime minister of Great Britain. Isaac Singer invented the sewing machine. Levi Strauss, largest manufacturer of denim jeans. Joseph Pulitzer established Pulitzer Prize for achievements in journalism, literature, music, and art. Can you imagine? That's just a tidbit. This is the blessings that God has given to the Jewish people. The blessings of God. And they are to provoke the other nations that what God has done for the Jewish people, he wants to do for every nation on the planet, every person on the planet, no matter what our ethnicity is. All right, so let's look at 33. Paul continues, he says, For God has bound everyone over to disobedience, meaning both Jew and Gentile, so that he may have mercy on them all. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has ever been his counselor? Who are we ever to tell God what he should do or not do? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him the Lord and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Paul says, Amen and Amen. So we need to understand the heart of God is to bring Jew and Gentile together as one new man. How do we know that? Scripture tells us that. Let's look at number uh, 34. Ephesians 2.11 Paul again is writing. He says, don't forget that you Gentiles used to be out 
outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In other words, they were doing it out of religious tradition, not out of a heart that was yearning for the Lord. In those days, you, even though, it, uh, I'm sorry, in those days you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. This is the Gentile people. And you did not know the covenant promises of God that God had made to them. You Gentiles lived in this world without God and without hope. The Jews were given the revelation of the one true God. Think about this. That's why we have that revelation today. Because of that revelation given to them. So Paul continues, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you Gentiles were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. Next one, for Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united, what did he unite? Jews and Gentiles into one people. Jews and Gentiles, this is the word of God, into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. Why would we ever have a wall of hostility today towards Jewish people? We should never. It has been broken down through the blood of Christ that he shed on that cross. And he, Jesus, did did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. One people that will serve, bless, and worship the one true living God. In heaven, they will not be Jews on one side and, and Christians on the other side. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross. And our hostility toward each other was what? Put to death. No Christian person, no person believing in Jesus Christ should have any anti-Semitism within them. None. If you come from a family that had anti-Semitism, I would encourage you strongly to repent of it. That is not of God. It's out of hell. Next one. He brought the good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done really for all of us. He has revealed to both the Jew and the Gentile the principle of believing in Messiah. And we need to understand that God's heart is very, very serious. Jesus has reconciled both Jew and Gentile to himself through the cross. The veil was torn so that we all could enter into a living relationship with the Lord, the Messiah of all people. Jewish people need to be born again. Gentile people need to be born again. But once that happens, we enter into one new body in the Lord himself. Next one. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners because of what we've been given by the Jewish people. Think about that. That's why we're no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, who were all Jewish. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of his dwelling where God lives by his spirit. What a debt we really owe to the Jewish people. What a debt we owe to them. And our last one. This is from Derek Prince. He says, Christians from Gentile backgrounds owe their entire spiritual inheritance to Israel. One appropriate way for them to acknowledge their indebtedness is to stand by Israel in the midst of their present pressure, pressures and to uphold them with faithful intercession. 
We owe, we owe our spiritual inheritance to Israel. Isn't that interesting? God wants to create in the heart of every one of us that heart for the Jewish people. So let's stand to our feet. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. So, Father, let's just bow our heads before the Lord. Many in here need to just ask God for forgiveness for having had a wrong heart towards Jewish people. Maybe you were taught that way. Maybe your parents lived that kind of a lifestyle. Maybe that's a stronghold that has come down your family line. But that is never of God. He calls it sin. And so let's just take a moment. Let's bow our head before the Lord and say, Father, if I have any hatred towards the Jewish people, yes. mockery, criticism of them, if I've been taught to call them names or to turn against them, wherever I am off, Lord, I'm asking you to cleanse my heart and to forgive me from every sin I have ever committed against you yes. and against the Jewish people. In the name of Jesus. And now ask the Lord, Father, let's lift our hands to him. I'm asking you to create in me, create in me a, new heart a new heart towards the Jewish people. Towards the Jewish that people. I will be a person that, will, that will, love them, will love them and bless them and, bless and stand for them stand and stand with them, with them stand no matter who does or who doesn't. Does does. Let me be that voice that's your voice in this day and age that we live in. Yes. That I would have a love for you and a love for this nation that you have called and set apart according to your own plan and purpose. And so, Father, this day as a church, we choose to bless Israel. Let's say we bless Israel in the name of Jesus. We ask the Lord God to pour out his blessings upon Israel. We ask the Lord to remove the veil from their eyes that they would see Messiah high and lifted up that Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach would be revealed to them. Father, we pray for the people to have a heart to receive you, yes. to turn to you in love, and to see who you truly are. Father, your word says one day every eye will behold you and that they will weep as those who weep for a firstborn son. And so we pray for Israel, the blessings of God, the mercies of God, the forgiveness of God, as he forgives us, that we release that forgiveness towards them in every which way. And we say, Lord, let your good will be done for this nation, Israel, for its people, and let the revelation of who Messiah is go deep into their hearts and cause a transformation that will change the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hi, thank you so much for watching our show today. We pray that you were just blessed with the message that you have received. If you wish to come by and join us at our church service on Sunday, Regeneration Church would love to have you with us. May God richly bless you and have a wonderful day in our Lord.